Hello and welcome to MicroCAD Tutorials. We're going to be talking about H-bridges today. So we're going to start by working from the height side end, which is going to be the P-channel end. We're going to create a P-channel MOSFET, and we're going to create another one. So basically what we're doing here is we're taking a high side and low side switch and we're duplicating it. So we have both the high side and the low side switching ability. And I'm more or less choosing models at random. These are going to be fine for what we need to do. I'm going to connect the bottom side, the source side of the end channel MOSFETs to ground. And we're going to connect the drain uh, to the drain. So a drain of the end channel to the drain of the P channel. We'll see why we're going to do that in just a little bit. These, these ones are going to connect to the power source. So we were going to turn these ones together, and we're going to call this VBAT. The way the microcap works is that if you label a node, um, so I should probably call this BAT, not VBAT. If you label a node, <clears throat> no matter where it is, it's going to be highlighted. So even though I have the power source over here, it's still going to be manifest there. And the last thing we're going to do is put a load. So we'll put a resistor. And you can do this. It's really common uh, to use inductors because those are what, what your motors are going to be typically for H-bridge drivers. But uh, you can do everything you need to do with a resistor. If you're checking just your timing or checking to see if the, the circuit works before you put an inductor on there, which is low impedance, which you could potentially burn out depending on how you've done your timing circuit. So I recommend that you do some kind of resistance if you're going to do this in the lab. But uh, anyway, we have uh, now four inputs, four on the high side, Four in the low, or uh, two in the high side, two, two in the low side. So we're going to call this um, GHA for gate high A and GHB for gate high B. This is going to be GH, GHL, oops, GLA for gate low A, and this is going to be gate low B. Sometimes you'll see this in data sheets for, um, for MOSFET drivers. They'll use this nomenclature, so that's why we're using it here. Just that, uh, yeah, I've seen it before, and it's been relatively common, so you can kind of expect to see that kind of naming convention. So now we have um, this h bridge driver. Okay, so that's great, but uh, essentially it's a four switch. Uh, loads We're load switching using four switches, and we now have the ability to control current direction because if I turn this MOSFET on and this MOSFET on, this one off and that one off, <coughs> then the current is going to go through R1 from its N1 side to its N2 side. So it's going to be going this way. Uh, likewise, if I turn this one on and this one on, this one off and this one off, sort of this sort of like crisscross pattern, then the current is going to come from the same battery source, just in a different direction. So now it's going to come from the N2 to N1 side and all the way through. So now we're going to take a look at that. So if I were to, if I were to put this to uh, V drive, just drive right there, okay. And I were to put uh, GHB to ground because that's what will turn that MOSFET on. And the, these are going to be off by default in in the lab. What you would do uh, because you generally don't leave pins open or floating. Um, you generally set them to explicit states. You would do something like this. So you're explicitly telling this MOSFET you're going to be off, and you're explicitly telling this MOSFET it's going to be off. And remember, it's a difference um, for the P channel. So the difference between the gate and the source has to be negative. And in this case, we've set them to the same value, so it's going to be 0, which is not negative. And then this is going to be on, and this is going to be on. So what we would expect is that the current is going to go through um, R1, and it's going to go through N2 to N1 as far as the indexing of that. So let's take a look at that. We run the analysis. And I'm just going to put the current here for R1. There we go. <clears throat> And we expect, we expect 12 milliamps because we have 12 volts and then 12 volts divided by 1K is going to be uh, 12 milliamps. Now it's not so easy. Generally we think of like, we think of voltages up here, but the, when the resistor is going sideways, it sort of depends which access point because then the circuit just resolves to a normal high side, low side switch. So, because these are off, these are effectively not connected to the circuit. Um, they're high impedance, so they are, but... Uh, if, if you want to imagine them as completely disconnected from the circuit, you won't be wrong. But this is a high side, low side switch. And so the current, we would expect it to go there. So let's take a look at the indication of that. So lots of things going on. Lots of currents. You can see pico currents and 10 to the, I don't even know what negative 19 would be. Extremely small. Um, but we have this 12 milliamps. And if we just move it, we, yep, there we go. We expect the arrow to be in this direction because of how we've done it. 
uh, and so this is how it's going to run, how it's going to perform. So you can check this in the lab when you do stuff like this, and it's not that much of a problem. So usually HBridge circuits are used to provide current direction control, and uh, you usually use this for um, a motor, a very simple motor that can either that runs in direction with the current or proportional to the current. So if you can run the current backwards through it, it'll run in the opposite direction. So clockwise or cl counterclockwise control is what you would do with an H-bridge circuit. So anyway, I'm going to take this one off and this one off. Um, and I'm going to, to now show the current going in the opposite direction. So we're going to turn this one on. So we're going to apply a ground there. And this, there's a weird sort of language is, is that in order to do on, you have to do ground here. And if you want to do off, you have to do match. And if you want to do down here, you have to ground to turn off. And if you want to um, turn on, then it's that way. OK, so this should be driven open or driven um, uh, continuous, low, low impedance. And this should be driven low impedance. So then we should see a current that goes from VBAT in this direction. Let's run the analysis. There we go, 12 milliamps. So the arrow is going this way. So effectively, that's what an H bridge does. If you're just if you're simply doing that, the problems with this though is what's called a shoot through condition. So you want to make sure that you avoid that. So what would what would happen if this MOSFET was open uh, or or it was on and this MOSFET was on? Well, the current or the charge coming th through VBAT would say, well, I don't really need to go through this resistor because I have a straight path to ground here. So you're essentially going to get all of this current is going to flow in directly through this. It's going to be extremely high current, maybe hundreds of amps, um, depending on what's going on. So this is going to obviously heat those MOSFETs and destroy them. So there are timing considerations that you need to do if you're going to be switching between clockwise and counterclockwise. You want to make sure that you turn everything off for a little bit of time and then just the MOSFETs that you want, because otherwise you might create a shoot through condition through here or shoot through condition here. And I like to think of pathways like if you go to a, an amusement park or Cedar Point or Six Flags or something like that or Disney World, uh, the ride that is most popular is going to have the highest resistance because there's a lot of people, a lot of bodies in the way. So um, if you are a smart amusement park goer, you're probably not going to um, wait four or five hours to ride one ride in the day. You'd rather ride 20 rides. So you're going to go through the ones that have the least impedance or the least amount of resistance as you go. So. The, the charge of the current thinks the same way. It says, why should I ride this really cool Disneyland ride that has so many people in it when I can just go straight to where I want to go, which is ground? And it does that. And so that's why you you got to avoid the shoot through conditions. So if this ever happens, if I ever take the drive signal and I put it there, that's a problem because all of the current is going to go through here. It's going to blow up these MOSFETs. Um, and you can demonstrate in that in the lab too. So if you're interested uh, and you want to take these you know, low MOSFET, really small MOSFETs, and then just run a shoot through condition through them, you're going to see some smoke uh, come up. And it's probably not going to cause you a lot, like it's not going to cause a fire, but it'll at least show you what you've done wrong. So in any case, that's a, that's an H-bridge, real basic stuff. And uh, the, next, the next would be three-phase um, power using uh, an inverter system. So now you have, uh, have three-phase power, and then you have... Uh, six MOSFETs in total. That's a much more complex topic, but thanks for tuning in today. I'll see you next